Good afternoon, Lieutenant Commander Matt Nelson. I'm Commanding Officer of 700 X-Ray Naval Air Squadron here at RNAS Cooldrose. And our job here is threefold, really. Our primary job at the moment is to support Scan Eagle operations embarked on Royal Navy Type 23 frigates, supporting the overall effort with the provision of ISR products in the Gulf areas east of Suez. Our second is to develop uh, test and evaluation of, of future UAS systems uh, and also potentially uh, get involved in manned test and evaluation as well. And finally, and longer term gain, is to support all future uh, naval and Royal Marine uh, UAS programs and develop Cooldrose and 700 X-Ray as a maritime UAS center of excellence for training and for test and evaluation. Could you tell us um, something about your UAV operations in the Gulf? Currently we support uh, one continuous task line in the Gulf uh, with the Scan Eagle UAS system. Uh, it is a military registered, however contractor owned and operated, in agreement with Boeing Defence UK and their subsidiary in situ, who are a US based company. As part of that, uh, the RN effectively leases hours of ISR through the use of Scan Eagle. Uh, and each flight that goes on board the Type 23s takes four uh, company contractors who are qualified pilots and maintainers of the Scan Eagle air vehicle, uh, plus two members of my staff, uh, a, a lieutenant uh, flight commander who has a background in aviation, uh, whether it's a pilot or observer, uh, and into the future air traffickers and other branches as well who have that aviation experience. And I also send a uh, Petty Officer Senior Maintenance Rating who ensures that the contractors that we have on board keep up the standards expected in the Fleet Air Arm and the Royal Navy uh, of operations from a flight deck. I understand Scan Eagle has worked with the Seeking ASAC uh, and uh, how is the picture brought back to the ship? Or right. Uh, whilst deployed, when opportunities exist, when we're in the same geographical space, then uh, we take every advantage to do cooperative uh, tasking with the SCAZAC, uh, with Merlin, and uh, traditionally with Lynx, uh, who generally, the Lynx has been the other airplane that has embarked alongside us in the Type 23s. Excitingly for us, uh, we're about to step into the vent uh, into a venture for the first time of deploying Scan Eagle alongside the Merlin Mark II uh, as both of those depart on St. Alma, St. Albans in the near future uh, to undertake uh, operations in that theatre. Of opera, uh, in that theater. Every time we get the opportunity, and we take your example of the Skazak, we get the two flying in the same relative airspace and we're developing the tactics and uh, um, evaluating what we gain from operating the two together, how it frees up capability in the SCAZAC, for example, how we can maintain persistent coverage on contacts of interest that have been identified by the bigger platform, but we can then maintain eyes on for hours at a time, which previously we haven't been able to do. So the Scan Eagle is, is not slave to the the bigger platform, but uh, if there's a something of interest, you'll send the Scan Eagle in. Absolutely, yes. So, the Skazak or Merlin or, or whichever other platform we're operating with don't have control of the Scan Eagle. We 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 still are a, a standalone capability, albeit on the ship, uh, and through either voice communications or other means, then we are directed to go to areas where contacts have been identified that are a priority to look at, where we then come into our own and we maintain that persistent look at the, the, the contact that has the highest priority. And um, the future of um, UAV operations, where do you see that heading? The final is to be decided yet, but uh, from 700 X-ray up through the Royal Navy chain of command. It is understood that uh, UAS is here, it is growing. The capability and game-changing uh, value that you get from the persistence generally 
uh, attributed to UAS makes our job uh, more effective in the realm. Uh, the Navy is actively pursuing uh, a permanent solution. Uh, the current Scan Eagle contract uh, and the way we operate it will uh, cease to exist in the middle of uh, 2017. Uh, but there are a number of uh, avenues and options that we are actively uh, uh, progressing, uh, which will then hopefully enable us in the 2020 period to have a core program of RN operated, owned and maintained UAS of multiple flights that not only deploy to uh, the Gulf region as we currently do, but have a global footprint. So wherever the RN goes, we will go with them. And the carrier, is, is there any um, uh, specific UAV requirement at, at, that you could see? At, at present there is nothing specific. But if we take the, the, the QE class as they're due to come in in the, in the near future, well with a 50 year lifespan, then yes, UAS will play a part in the QE life cycle and fully anticipate in the future that UAS will be operated from that class of, of ship. Exactly when and what it is we're doing UAS-wise from the carriers is to be decided. Brilliant. And is there anything in the future that you'd like to talk about um, that you're currently operating on? That uh, as part of the squadron's remit, where we uh, we have a broad range of, of uh, areas that we're tapping into. As an example, uh, we're we're closely aligned with Southampton University, who uh, have developed a three D printed small UAS. It's roughly three kilos, but it's to prove that technology of fast, rapid, laser scented printing. Uh, my team here are involved in the in a, a trial process to enable, uh, well, I'll step back one, uh, recently we launched the first 3D printed one off HF, HMS Mersey off the south coast here uh, to prove that it can be. Uh, and in, in the first quarter of next year, members of my staff will, uh, will embark on HMS Protected down uh, in the South Atlantic uh, and go down on one of her patrols in the ice to prove the concept of these small UAS actually playing a role in uh, ice uh, detection for passage and, and other um, uh, um, phenomena that are down there. Um, that, that's at one small scale. Bigger scale, there's, there's development for, as I've already stated, the, the wider use and employment of UAS throughout the fleet. Uh, and again, that is still to be determined at this time. But we're, act, we're expecting that in the next half decade to decade that the majority of deploying frigates, and not only frigates and destroyers, but also the capital ships will have a UAS presence of some sort. When you said um, 3D, is, is that um, a standard UAV producing a 3D picture? No, no, no. no. That is a 3D printer producing an air vehicle. Oh, right. So, uh, Is there a name for this it, it, the, the project we're running is Project Albatross, and is, it's to do with Southampton University's, they call it the SOLSA, Southampton University Laser Sintered Aircraft. So the laser sinting is the 3D printing of, of the component parts, uh, which in the longer term may have great value, whether it's on just the replenishment of certain component parts on a wider range of aeroplanes, or actually does that technology, is that technology able to be taken forward to produce full UAS for them, for us in the future whilst deployed? Is that sort of um, uh, a replaceable use one throw away UAV or? Potentially, Th these ones aren't, these are just development aeroplanes, air but it could be that, it could be one shot only. Um, you still need all the, the brains and the, yeah. the, the working components, but it's for the actual airframe uh, and main structure of it. To so the damage replacement. Then, or yeah, that is, right. that is definitely one that's looked at. So there are, on Scan Eagle, there are certain parts of the airplane that are designed to break away on recovery to save the majority of the airplane. You have to have a, a 
constant stream of um, stores replenishment to to enable that. Yeah. Well, if we can do that potentially in the future with a 3D printing machine, where effectively we have a bag of special plastic, and then when we use one component, we press go on the machine and out comes a new one, which we can plug and go.